Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer with Kidderminster Ismir. Uh, my name is Nigel Taylor, I'm the Team Rector. Um, thank you for joining me and uh, I hope that this morning will set you up for the day as we think about our day ahead, as we think about ourselves and prepare ourselves in these times where sadly Covid is rising again and we face new challenges. So let's begin with uh, a moment's silence. Let's just be still and recognise that we are in the presence of God. Open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Psalm for today is Psalm 19. The commandment of the Lord is pure and gives light to the eyes. The heavens are telling the glory of God and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. One day pours out its song to another and one night unfolds knowledge to another. They have neither speech nor language and their voices are not heard. Yet their sound has gone out in all lands, and their words to the ends of the world. In them has he set a tabernacle for the sun, that comes forth as a bridegroom out of his chamber, and rejoices as a champion to run his course. It goes forth from the end of the heavens, and runs to the very end again, and there is nothing hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey dripping from the honeycomb. By them also is your servant taught, and in keeping them there is great reward. You can tell how often they offend. O oh, cleanse me from my secret faults. Keep your servant also from presumptuous sins, lest they get dominion over me. So shall I be undefiled and innocent of great offence. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. The commandment of the Lord is pure and gives light to the eyes. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, rise in our hearts this day and fold us in the brightness of your love and bear us at the last to heaven's horizon for your love's sake. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Let's take a moment to think about that reflection on who God is, on the sweetness of God, on the love of God. Let's just be still and think about those words for a moment. So we continue now with our reading from Acts chapter 15, verses 22 to 35. Then the apostles and the elders, which the consent of the whole, with the consent of the whole church, decided to choose men from among their members and to send them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. Sent Judas, called Barabbas, and Silas, leaders among the brothers, with the following letter. The brothers, both the apostles and the elders, to the believers of Gentile origin in Antioch and, and Cyrea and Cilicia, greetings. Since we have heard that certain persons who have gone out from us, though we have no instructions from us, have said things to disturb you and have unsettled your minds, 
we have decided unanimously to choose representatives and send them to you, along with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, who have risked their lives for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have therefore sent Judas and Silas, who themselves will tell you the same things by word of mouth. For it has seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to impose on you no further burden than these essentials. That you abstain from what has been sacrificed to idols and from blood and from what is strangled and from fornication. If you keep yourselves from these, you will do well. Farewell. So they were sent off and went down to Antioch. When they gathered the congregation together, they delivered the letter. When its members read it, they rejoiced at the exhortation. Judas and Silas, who were themselves prophets, said much to encourage and strengthen the believers. After they had been there for some time, they were sent off in peace by the believers to those who had sent them. But Paul and Barnabas remained in Antioch, and there with many others they taught and proclaimed the word of the Lord. I wonder how we would receive such a letter. What letters do we need to receive in our churches, in our lives, to put us on the right track, to focus our minds? Such a short letter there, reflecting what was going on in Antioch. So what's going on here in our own parishes? What do we need to do to move closer to God, to be nearer to his mission and following his commands? Let's be still for a moment and just ponder on on those questions. Our responsory is very apt to uh, to that reading from Acts. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. Be not far from me, O my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. So we have our Gospel Canticle, the Benedictus. Give your people knowledge of salvation, O God, by the forgiveness of all their sins. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our en enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Give your people knowledge of salvation, O God, by the forgiveness of all their sins. So we offer our prayers for the day, for ourselves, for our world, and for the church. During this time, there'll be periods of silence for you to offer your own prayers. So let's pray. Loving God, we pray for the day ahead of us. Pray for those things that we look forward to, those things that are going to challenge us, the surprises that might happen. Lord, in all that we do, may we be a blessing to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
pray for God's world, the world that we now see still in the grips of a pandemic. Pray for those services that are helping people, for those who are doing the testing. Pray for our government. Pray for those leaders who are making difficult decisions for the use of resources. And we pray for ourselves that in some small way we can help stop the spread of this disease. Pray for the wildfires that are happening in Siberia and the USA, the damage that's being done to God's world. In the silence we bring before God those things that are on our hearts that concern us about the creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for God's church. We give thanks for all that he gives us. We pray for our churches, pray for all of those who lead and are in positions that influence the church. Pray for each denomination, for our brothers and sisters in the Methodist Church, the Catholic Church, the United Reformed Church and the Free Churches. Pray that we can be one unified church, the body of Christ. Lord, help us to respond positively and actively to the pandemic. In silence, we bring before God those things that concern us about our church, about our lives with God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so we pray for those who are ill. Remember all of those known to us by name before God and ask for God's healing and wholeness to be with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And remember all of those who've died in the faith of Christ, those who we love but no longer see, and in the silence we bring them before God now. So Lord, be with all of those who grieve, with those who are hurting and missing their loved ones. Help them to know that their loved ones are safe and at rest and give us the light of hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And in the silence we pray for ourselves. We bring before God all of those worries that we have. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, whose only Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence, give us pure hearts and steadfast wills to worship you in spirit and in truth, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So we bring our prayers together with the Lord's Prayer, in whichever form you normally use. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord, bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. So have a wonderful day. We have good weather at the moment. Enjoy it if you can and stay safe. Keep your distance, wear a mask and wash your hands. And I hope to see you all very soon. <laughs>